everybody, welcome back to Rain and Pause. I've seen a lot of questions lately in a few of the pouring groups that I've been in on how to mix this little piggy pigments for paint pouring. So today's video is a basic rundown of how to mix them for various techniques. I'll show you how to disperse them, uh, a couple of pouring mediums to mix into, and what techniques they can be used for. I'm not going to demonstrate those techniques because there are so many of them, but I'll show you three basic consistencies which will be a really thick one, suitable for blooms, a slightly thinner one which is better for ring pours and things where you don't want too many cells. I'll show you a really thin one which is best for Dutch pours and then you can work out where you want to make your consistency in the middle for anything like dirty cups, flip, uh, flip cups, dirty pours, open pours, all that sort of thing. You work with those techniques all the time so you're, you know that uh, consistency better than anybody. Um, you know what works for you. I work with blooms so I'm very familiar with that consistency. However, uh, not every technique uses the same concoction, the same mixture of pouring medium. So that's what this video is all about. I'll show you a fair few different pouring mediums and I'll explain some things on the way. So let's go down to the table and we'll start. Here on my table, I have a few things that will get you started with mixing your little piggy pigments. I have, of course, my little piggy pigments, which I'll mix up today. So when I'm mixing up my pigments for blooms, I mix them in these baby food containers. These are four ounce baby food containers and they've got a lid that snaps shut that's completely airtight and they come in a tray. There's eight to a tray and these are absolutely perfect for storing your paints. Um, you can use them for any technique. I really like them for the blooms because of the perfect consistency. Um, sorry, they're the perfect volume uh, to store all those paints and they last a fairly long time. So I'm going to move these out of the way and I'll explain to you what I have. So on my bench here, I've got some pouring mediums and some flow troll and some things to stir with. So starting off, I've got some heavy gel gloss. Now this product is the Atelier brand. You can get this from Golden, uh, Matisse, Liquitex, all of those brands produce a gel gloss medium. Now you can get this in gloss, high gloss, medium gel, matte finish, you can get them in a wide range of things and Atelier is the only company I know of that makes a satin version of this as well. And the consistency of this is really, really thick. So when you dip your spoon in there, it does not come off the stick. Let me go for a detailed shot and let's see if I can demonstrate that a bit better. So you can see that it's really quite thick. It doesn't glob off the stick or anything and it's actually holding its shape underneath. Now this is perfect for mixing your little piggy pigments into a thick paint if you want to use it like a brush paint. So the way I prefer to do that is just on a tile and I take some of my heavy gloss gel and this is entirely dependent on what technique you're using, which pouring medium you choose to use. I like to do it this way so I know that my pigment is fully dispersed in the gel and this is all you need to make paint. This is your base, it's a clear drying base and we're going to add the colour in the form of pigment. So I'm going to use this little piggy lily pad which is a nice vibrant light green colour. So all I need to do with this is take a bit of the pigment and I just eyeball it. You don't need too much so there's 20 grams in this jar and that barely looks like it's even touched the surface. This is a brand new jar. And I'm just going to dump the pigment on top. And I use a spatula. You can use whatever size uh, tool you like. And I'm just going to very slowly push the pigment into the paint. Now, now it's quite important when you're working with pigments, especially out of the jars, to wear a mask if you're anywhere near the pigment because they are very fine particles and if you breathe them in, they can cause respiratory issues. So you want to mix this in carefully. And I know I'm not wearing a mask right this second, but you won't be able to hear me if I'm not. So you want to scoop it all up. And usually would you, you would use a much bigger tile. And you just want to press it into your gel. Now watercolor artists that make their own paints do this with what is called a muller and a glass plate. The glass plate and the, both the, the muller and the glass plate are both abrasive 
which means that they've had the finish sanded down from a glossy finish to one with some very tiny ridges in it and you can do that yourself just by a glass plate um, and use a bit of rough sandpaper on the surface and you buy another piece uh, a giant glass ball which is the muller and rough that up as well and what that does as they create friction and they slide against each other they grind the pigments into the paint and help it to disperse evenly okay so this right here is a very basic form of paint that we've just made so we've taken our base we've added our pigment and now we have a colored paint and it looks a lot darker in the jar because I didn't add as much as I should have to this so if I wanted to add a little bit more I can that's way too much this is going to be very heavily saturated but that's perfectly fine because what I will do with this is I will use this to make a Dutch pour medium and that needs to be quite heavily saturated so that the pigment doesn't uh, separate out and cause what we call flocculation. So flocculation can occur in any style of paint pouring and that occurs when the paint mixture doesn't have enough acrylic binder to hold onto the pigment or there's not enough uh, or you've added too much water and that acrylic binder has broken down. So what that looks like is tiny little bits of sand floating around in your pouring medium and that's the tiny bits of mica and pigment uh, coming out of that suspension. Now, when you mix it into your gel, don't forget that gel looks white. So naturally your pigment and your color is going to look a little bit different to what is in the jar. But this is now fully saturated and that looks exactly the same as what I have in my jar here. Now, once you're done with that, you can scrape this all up. And I'm going to put this into a little cup and I will show you how I mix that up a little bit later. Excuse the screeching. Now you can use this as you would any normal paint that's really thick. It doesn't come out of the cup. You saw that there. So you could use this for brush painting, you could use it for decoupage, you could use it um, to create textural relief. So if you use something a bit thicker than your heavy gloss gel, like your texture pastes, um, you could even mix this in with gesso and you can create a structural paint out of this. Now I'm going to wipe off my spatula. And wipe down the tile as best I can. Now when you're mixing with heavy gel, you want to be really quick with it because it does tend to set and dry very, very quickly. And the thinner the layer is, the quicker it will dry. So I'll wash this tile off later on and I will use that for another pour. Now I've got green all over my bench here, but that's fine. Okay, so I'm going to put the lid on my heavy gel gloss so it doesn't dry out too quickly. And always wipe down, I always wipe down my stir sticks with a paper towel and then I give them a thorough wash at the end of my paint session. Okay, that's good to go. Lid back on, and this one can sit aside for now. Now, before this sets, I'll show you how to mix up your pigments for a Dutch pour. So, usually with a Dutch pour, I followed Canella's recipe the other yesterday for the first time, and I will link her videos down below. And I'm really, really impressed with how it turned out. So this is the first Dutch pour I've ever done. And you can see the little piggy pigment shining right here. And the camera's not doing it justice because I used this little piggy blue eyes and glisten. And it's got the most amazing color shift aqua as that glisten plays over the blue eyes. So they do work in Dutch pours. Um, something I learned was that I, I was trying to layer them on top so I would see them more. But in reality, you have to layer them near the bottom of the pour as the top colors tend to get blown out too much and you lose them. So that's just a, a trick that I would employ. Now to mix up for a Dutch pour, I, like I said, I follow Canela's recipe. And 
That involves using a set of scales to measure out your pouring medium accurately. And her recipe is as follows. It is 80, milligram, uh, 80 milliliters of, Australia, uh, of Floetrol. I am in Australia, so my Floetrol looks like this. And I will let you know straight up, if you're using Australian Floetrol, you are going to get crazy, crazy cells like I just showed you. If you're using American Floetrol, your cells are not going to be as extreme. Um, I'll just show you again on a smaller piece. I have cells galore going on here. Um, you can see them there. And that's because of the Australian Floetrol. The American Floetrol doesn't give as extreme lacing and as extreme a result as that does. So just be aware of that if your results don't look the same as mine. But for Canela's recipe, she usually uses 80 grams of Floetrol, 40 grams of paint, and 30 grams of water. Now, I don't have 40 grams of paint here. So what I'm going to do is figure out how much the cup weighs, and that's seven grams. I'm going to tear that, which means you're taking your scales back to zero. So when I take that off, that's gonna to go to six or seven grams, whatever it was. And then I'm going to weigh how much paint I have. So I've only got 10 grams of paint in there. So I'm going to divide my recipe by four. So I've got 10 grams of paint, the original recipe is 40 grams, so I'm going to divide it by four. So I'm going to put into this 20 mils of Floetrol. Again, take it down to zero. And I gave my Floetrol a good shake beforehand. Now this bottle of Floetrol is over a year old and it's very, very thin, so it's no longer suitable for the bloom method for a cell activator. Um, I've got a new bottle for that. It's much thicker. It's got more body to it and in the original recipe It's 30 grams. So I'm going to put about eight grams eight and a half grams of water Now I did find yesterday with the heavy gel gloss that my paints were far far thicker than The other paints that I mix up that were just acrylic paint in the mixture and that's how potent the heavy gel gloss is. So if you are mixing up pigments uh, in your Dutch pores, be aware of that, that the heavier the gloss gel that you use, the more water you may need to add to thin it down or more flow trial to thin it down. So now I've got a little coffee stirrer. This is just a tool from Ikea and I'm going to push all of the pigment down into the medium as best I can. Get some of that off here. Okay, and I'm just going to let it run. So with these, it's best if you can try and hold it steady up the top. That's going to give it the best chance to get in there and dissolve everything. And one important thing to remember is that American Floetrol and Oatrol will dull your pigments. So be aware of that. You can do Dutch pours with just paint and water, as Rin Skaduna does, and I believe she invented this technique. So you can get amazing results with just pigment and water. Sorry, I'm not showing you that under the detail. Let me just turn that off, scrape this down, give it one final stir. Getting all that extra paint off it. Okay, and I'll wipe this down. Normally I have a cup handy with some water in it. And that is now nice and clean, ready for the next color. So here we have a pigment paint mixed up for a Dutch pour. Now it should flow nicely off the stick into your cup. And let me see if I can get a, another close up of that. This is better. Okay, I'm just trying to focus on that, which we don't want. There we go, flowing nicely off the stick, 
straight back into the cup. Nice steady stream and when it's in that cup it shouldn't be leaving a mound, it's dissolving straight into the mixture. Okay, that's mixed up, ready for a Dutch pour. Next I will show you how to mix up for a bloom pour. Bloom pours are the next thickest on the list and that's the one I use all the time. And for blooms in Australia, we use this as our pouring medium. This is Taubman's Easy Coat Door and Trim in gloss. And this is a house paint, okay? So bloom relies on the house paint and the difference in the layers, uh, in the texture of the layers um, to form the bloom. So our base layer is a low sheen layer. This is a gloss layer and the top layer contains just flow troll and paint. Now, if you want to learn how to do blooms, you can take Shelly's course online at shellyart.com.au. Really helpful. There's a members only group in there now as well. And we're all there to help each other. Right. So now we've got our Torbman's Easy Coat. And this paint is very, very thick. Now, the benefit to using this paint is it dries clear and it is perfect for mixing your pigments into. Now, this is what it looks like. It looks like snot. It's quite disgusting. <laughs> snot is the best thing I can relate it to. But once you mix it all up, this will often have a layer of uh, gloss varnish on the top of it. You mix that all in really well and it smooths out and becomes nice and viscous and runny. Okay, so you can see how that is. Now for our blooms, we need to disperse our pigments in gloss varnish before we can add them to our paint. So the color that I'm going to mix up is sapphire. And I'm going to show you that what the color you get in the jar is the color that you will get when you mix it up. So if you're not getting that color, you're doing something incorrect. Okay, so it doesn't help that I'm wearing black gloves trying to show you this color. So I'll put the bit of white paper down. So you can see that this is really, really dark, right? It's very pink. So this is perfect to show you that if something's not working, you've messed up somewhere. So the gloss varnish is Jo Sonia. We use this one in the green, in the green bottle. Okay. And all I've done is separated that out into a little bottle here and it's easier to apply. You want to add about an eighth of a teaspoon to half a teaspoon of varnish and then about the same worth of pigment. Now the more pigment you add, the more vibrant and true to color the final result is going to be. Okay. So once that's in there, and the reason I add the varnish first is so that the clumps of paint don't get stuck to the bottom of the container. I'm going to mix that up and you can see that that is really incredibly vibrant and shiny as it should be. Now, of course, it will look a little bit different in the tub because it's pure pigment. It will look a lot darker, but this is the true color of sapphire. Okay. Then I'm going to add my pouring medium, sorry, my uh, untinted paint, and I just eyeball it. Okay. I'm used to making this recipe up, so I know exactly how they should look. But the recipe we suggest is one quarter to one half a teaspoon of varnish, one quarter to half a teaspoon of, of pigment, and up to two tablespoons of untinted paint. That would be our torments. So now I'm going to give this a good mix. And the Torbman's paint is not clear. It looks like condensed milk. It's not a very uh, good look. And I've had tubs that look slightly pink. I've had tubs that look slightly yellow, but they do dry clear. And here we go. That is sapphire mixed up beautifully. And you can definitely tell that that is sapphire. Okay, the color has not changed at all. Go for a top down view here. And this is the consistency for my bloom pouring me. Get nice and close in here. There we go, get it to focus. Doesn't help I'm wearing white gloves, guys, sorry. Okay, 
just not going to want to focus on this. There we go. Beautiful consistency. And if you do want to see how the perfect consistency for your bloom pores, check out my video uh, on my channel called Consistency is Key. But you can see there that it's that beautiful, rich blue color that we know as sapphire. Again, seal that up and paper towel, wipe off my stir stick. Now the next color I will mix up is an interference color and I'm going to mix that up for the blooms as well so I can show you how they turn out and that color is going to be rose quartz. So again I'm just going to squirt a little bit of my gloss varnish in there going to grab my rose quartz and again add about half a teaspoon of pigment with interference colors I use a little bit more so they're more intense you can add as much or as little as you need to and we just disperse that being very careful not to spill it out the sides and that's one of the good reasons to wear a mask I'm keeping my face well away from my containers here because I know that's a possibility. And then I'm going to add my untinted paint. Now, interference colors are colors that display as white in the jar, but when you tilt them in the light, they throw a different color. So this one here is rose quartz, and it's a beautiful rose gold color, you can see there. And another example would be something like glisten. Glisten is actually a duo color. You can see on the left hand side there, there's blue and on this side there's green. So they're really interesting and can create some amazing effects in your pores. So once that's added, just give it a good stir, scrape the bottom of the container. And there we have rose quartz mixed up. And you can see that color change, that beautiful glistening rose gold color there. I'll show you again this way. There's that gorgeous rose gold color shift. Okay, now if you need to adjust the consistency of your paints, for the blooms we adjust up and down by adding more untinted paint or more varnish. So obviously adding more varnish is going to make your paint much thinner and adding more untinted paint is going to make your uh, f final paint much thicker. So wh whichever country you're in, whichever method you're doing, the same principle applies and the general rule I explain is your paints will only ever be as thin or as thick as your thickest and thinnest components. So if you're using water in your pouring medium, your paint will only ever be as runny as that water and if you're using you know cement in your pouring medium for god knows whatever reason uh, it will only ever be as thick as the cement it's not going to thicken up now that's not entirely true as if you leave paints open they will start to set but when they're mixed they're never ever going to be thicker than my untinted paint or thinner than my varnish in this instance now the next technique i want to show mixing up is for a ring pour, uh, which is a thicker style of pour. Now the other thing you can use to disperse your pigments and use in your pores is a ready-made pouring medium. Now by ready-made pouring medium I mean one that is made by a, a company such as Atelier, Golden, Matisse, Liquitex, they all have these and this is a liquid mixture that you can mix your paint straight into, basically extends your paint and allows you to pour it as it makes it more vi uh, less viscous. Sorry. So more viscous means it's thicker, less viscous means it's thinner. Floetrol is not a pouring medium. I can't stress this enough. Floetrol is a paint conditioner. It goes into your paint to thin it down, even though it says it doesn't thin it down, it does a little bit and it basically makes, it breaks down the surface tension of the paint um, so that it glides easier. So it extends the wet time of the paint, it allows painters to paint the whole house and go over it multiple times before the paint dries so you don't see as many brush strokes or roller strokes and this is what gives them the professional finish. 
Now, we use it in pouring. However, the company that makes this does not necessarily support what we use it in pouring for. Clean your containers once you're done with them so they don't seal themselves shut. Okay. Come on. Play nice. There we go. So that's what happens when your paint dries in the lid and it gets stuck. Now, the ready-made pouring medium is nice and thick. Okay, and I would say this is the perfect consistency for a Dutch pour, for example. The paint is dribbling straight off, straight into the stick. Uh, you could use this for a flip cup, dirty pour, galaxy pour, all that sort of thing. Now, if you wanted to thicken this up for whatever reason, if you need a, a much thicker paint, if you don't want as many cells, I'm going to show you how. Now, when you use a, when you need to thicken anything up, it is always better to thin a thick substance than it is to thicken a thin substance. So, in this example, I'm going to use our heavy gel gloss again. And I'm just going to take a little bit and put it into a little cup here. This is just a one ounce cup. And because I want to thicken all of this, that gel gloss is going to go a long way to thicken this. Okay. So to thicken that, I'm just going to add a little bit of my pouring medium into this and I'm going to stir that first. And this is a similar process to when you make a gravy. Uh, you start off with butter and flour to make a roux, you thin it down and then you gradually add your milk to dissolve all the lumps. If you don't do that, you're going to end up with lumpy pouring medium. And you can see now that that gel gloss is a little bit more runny, so I'm going to add a little bit more pouring medium and you just want to get this to a stage that it's no longer thick and clumpy and mix that up once you can see that it's flowing a little bit and it's going to dissolve well into your pouring medium you can absolutely add that in so I'm at that stage now it's flowing off nicely it's not in not in a big solid chunk I'm going to add that in To here and just give it a good stir okay so this could probably be a little bit thicker but now the texture is holding its shape for maybe one to two seconds and you can see that little trace on the surface of the the pouring medium there and that's going to give you that's going to give you a better structure and create slightly less cells than what it normally would as it's a lot thicker so again that would be great for an open cup dirty pour that sort of thing if you wanted that thicker again you could definitely add more gel gloss um, you could add your matte medium what it like as I mentioned before whatever your thickest substance is you can keep adding that to that now to add pigment to this there are two ways you could do it you could mix up your pouring medium as I have here and have it all ready um, and just add your pigment straight to this you can divide it up into little cups and I'm going to show you how I would do that now so I'm just going to reuse this same little cup I'm going to add a little bit of pouring medium and let's do harvest gold this time and I'm going to add a good spoonful of harvest gold and you could use your little stirrer if your container is big enough. I'm just going to mix it with my stir stick. Make sure you dissolve this really well and you can still see all of these little lumps of pigment in there. You want to stir until they're basically all gone. Now you'll be able to gauge whether they're lumps of pigment or whether they are uh, bubbles. I can tell, you may not be able to tell on camera, but I can see when they're all dissolved. So now it's mostly just bubbles. Remember that a thicker pouring medium will hold on to bubbles a lot more than what a thinner pouring medium will, will do. And then I'm just going to add enough pouring medium that I think I'll need for my pour. Once your pigments are dissolved, 
you can add slightly more. So because I've added a fair bit more pouring medium and it looks naturally white, it's dulled the color a fair bit. But if your pouring medium dries clear, as the Liquitex does, the Atelier does, and the Torman's House Paint all do, all do, that will dry the natural color of uh, Harvest Gold. But you can see, because it's white now, it will look slightly pastel in the cup. You can add some more pigment. Don't be shy to. You bought it for a reason, and that's to use it. And some techniques definitely do need more pigment than others to prevent that flocculation, as I mentioned before. And you will know if you keep adding pigment and nothing's changing, that you've reached the point of saturation for your pouring medium. So there's no point adding more, you're only going to waste the pigment. And this is about as accurate a colour representation as I'm going to get from that heavy gel gloss and the Atelier pouring medium at this stage. But once dry, again, because they dry clear, it's going to dry exactly as it looks in the container. Now this is globbing off my stir stick, if you can see. And that's leaving quite a long trace on the surface, almost like a mound. So I don't know what technique you'd use this for. You could use it for a tree ring, water it down with a little bit of water, just so it's flowing. Um, you don't want it too thick, otherwise it's not going to move anywhere on the canvas. And you don't want it too thin, otherwise it's just going to blow everywhere. So I may use this later on, and I'll just thin that down, and I'll use that for a Dutch pour, for example. Okay. I'm going to sit this one aside. And I think that is it. So again, Floetrol is not a pouring medium in itself. However, if you wanted to thin this down and use it for a Dutch pour and you wanted to create some really awesome cells with it, you definitely could. Um, just add a little bit of flow troll to this instead of water to thin it down and that will give you the effects of the flow troll while also using pouring medium. So it's a great way to save a little bit of money on flow troll and pouring medium if you want to mix and match. You can do that. So there you have it guys. I've shown you several different ways that you can mix up your This Little Piggy pigments for various techniques. I showed you how to mix that into your gel gloss for brush painting or applications where you want some texture in your artwork. I showed you then how to take that gloss gel, which is now a paint because you've added pigment to your binders, and turn that into a recipe for a Dutch pour. I used Canela Siraco's recipe. Her video number 63 is where I've got that from. So if you wanted to learn a bit more about that, how she mixes up her paints, check that out. She's a brilliant Dutch pour artist. You could also mix them with uh, paint and water. So that gel medium, I'm guessing you could just thin that down with water to the um, point you need it and use it like a regular paint like Rinske Duna does. She invented the technique and she's also another amazing Dutch pour artist. Uh, I showed you how to mix that into your house paint, uh, untinted house paint. So when I said untinted house paint, that means a, a paint that's got no tint in it. So if you're looking for something in the US, Bare 8300 is the closest that you've got to our Torbens untinted paint. In the UK, uh, there are several other brands that you've got access to as well. Um, I can't remember what those are off the top of my head, but uh, they are definitely available. And no matter what country you're in, you can use these pigments in your pouring medium. Just look for a paint that has no titanium white in it. If it does not dry clear, and it's best to do a test of that first, if it does not dry clear, do not use it as a pouring medium because the pigments will not shimmer and shine like they should. Uh, that's why I love the Torbmans. It dries clear and your pigments get that really deep vibrancy out of it. Um, I also showed you how to mix your pigments into a ready-made pouring medium. I used the Atelier today and how to thicken that pouring medium up for other techniques using the gloss gel. Again, you don't have to use a gloss gel if you don't want a gloss finish on your piece. You can use matte gel, you can use satin, anything that will thicken up that paint and you could use that. Uh, I also showed you how to thin your thickening agent first by slowly diluting it with that thinner medium and that will help it to incorporate easier and then you can just mix your pigment straight into that. Do remember that you will need more pigment for techniques that are more fluid. If they are a thicker paint, 
you don't need as much pigment in there. If you're doing a Dutch pour, for example, you're gonna need about twice as much pigment as we normally recommend for other techniques. General recipe recommendation is one quarter to one half a teaspoon of pigment to one quarter to one half a teaspoon of Josonian gloss varnish to disperse. You can replace that varnish with your Atelier pouring medium or whatever other binding agent that you're using. And then mix that into up to two tablespoons of pouring medium for a thicker technique. And you can extend that out a little bit further for your more runny techniques, your less viscous techniques, but you may need to add more pigment along the way to keep that uh, incredible color and richness. And make sure, again, that whatever pouring medium you're using dries clear. Floetrol alone is not a pouring medium. The US Floetrol will dull your paints. It contains a matting agent. And the reason that Floetrol creates such good, amazing cells is because it's got a surfactant in it, which breaks down the surface tension of the paint and causes the uh, cells to form. So you can definitely do that. You can use silicon oil with your pigments. They'll be absolutely fine. And any other of your oils like your dimethicones and other things that you use to create cells won't affect your pigments. It's specifically designed to go into pouring medium and acrylic paint and that sets them apart from everything else. Everything else is just created as a pigment, whereas these are designed to specifically dissolve in acrylic mediums. You can also use them in resin, you can use them for dry dusting, they're just such a versatile little pigment. Do note that if you're dry dusting them, you'll need to add something over the top, like a layer of varnish or something to bind that on, um, otherwise it will just wipe off, it's just a powder. They are not miracle ingredients. While they are amazing, they're not a one step, okay, I'm gonna add this to something and it's going to work. You do need to add an acrylic binder. So look for anything that says 100% pure acrylic or 100% acrylic binders, something like that. And that will be good to go. You could also use a little bit of binding medium to disperse these if you're putting them in any technique. We don't recommend that for the bloom. Use the gloss varnish as the binder does something funny to the varnish and the paint mixture. But binder medium is definitely something else you could use. Uh, you could also dissolve these straight into a varnish and make a glaze which will form like a really thin layer over whatever you're uh, brushing that on. Amazing result you could get with using an interference color like the rose quartz or the glisten over the top of a painting or something or just in certain spots. That would make it really amazing. So they really are so versatile. So play around with them, have a go, have an experiment and see what you can come up with. I'm gonna leave it there for this video. Hopefully I've answered a few things that you might have wondered about this or solved any problems you might have had. And if you do have any questions, please leave them down below. I'll try and answer them at least within a few days. And if you're liking what I'm doing, like and subscribe. And I hope to see you in the next video, guys. Take it easy. Bye.